and you know it's, it's this thing to where it's a lot of talk about men working and you know going out to work and not being able to be there for their kids because they got to work they got to provide and i understand that and i didn't miss some parts of my son's lives like some games and things like that and i've never missed anything like really special but and i've been fortunate to be able to start my own company and kind of build my own brand but i don't feel that i'm special in that area i feel that we all can do it we just may need to talk to the right person or we may need to really sit down and think outside of the box and really see what it'll take but and also sometimes you got to take your chances you got to press the limit sometimes we could do more than we think we could do in the sense of like if if your child has a recital or a game at 7 p.m and you work 3 to 11 a lot of times just we have not because we ask not to where if you went to the to the boss if you're not the boss if you went to the boss and said hey you know, my child has this thing at seven o'clock. Is there somebody I could switch shifts with? Or is there a way that I could come in three to six and then go to the three to six thirty, go to the recital at seven and then come back after it at like nine? And just asking that question, the boss may say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna give you that day off. Take, take a um, paid day off I'm give you a paid day off because the fact that you even had the nerve to come ask me can you be there for your child I respect that and that's one of the things that I want men to understand is that we have to do everything in our power to be more present don't get so caught up about oh gotta make money gotta make money cause to the child the child don't know the difference between steak and a burger child don't know the difference between filet mignon and a burger the child don't know the difference between beans and rice and shrimp alfredo so it's like yeah you gotta make money but ain't no amount of money gonna replace the time that you have with that child and the reason why i'm shooting this video because i <clears throat> talking to one of my clients and they they do a thing to where it's a it's a high ticket high ticket service that my client has and with this high ticket service this service is like five thousand to twelve thousand dollars and but it's typically done on saturdays you know the class is taught on saturdays so I could partner and get 10 people to get this service, which is proven, guaranteed. Get this service, let's say it's 5K. 10 people, that's 50K. If I partner with my client, that's 25K that I make. I could do that four Saturdays in a row and make 100,000. That 100,000, it sounds really good, but I'm gonna tell you one thing about me is the hole in my heart from missing my son games at 16 years old when he's on his path of trying to be recruited to play Division One soccer. And in the first scrimmage of the season, he scored a goal from 40 yards out. I want y'all to understand 40 yards is 120 feet. From 40 yards out, top bends, knuckleball. What I mean by that is, this was a very hard, direct shot that went into the top corner of the goal, which is extremely hard to do. He left footed, but he plays defense, not offense. So he's not a forward, a striker. He plays left back. 
So he rarely, based on their set, he rarely gets to shoot the ball. So in this game, his first shot, he came up middle of the field, a little past middle of the field. First shot, boom. He never hit that shot in his life. Guess what? I would dare to see it with my eyes. To me, that's worth more than $100,000. And one of the things that, I, that I've learned is that by forcing myself to find a way, by forcing myself to be creative, I've still been able to make a living. And yeah, I can't make as much as I could, but I've still been able to make a living. So my son plays at three o'clock tomorrow and I'm gonna have to miss my younger son game because he plays at 12 and at four but my older son plays at three, but has to be there at two, and it take an hour and 15 minutes to get there. So we're not really gonna be able to see much of his game. Well, we're not gonna be able to see his game. So with that being the case, I have to take in, I gotta miss my younger son games, but see, he's younger, so he got more time to play. He nine years old. So I was working and traveling every week when my oldest son was eight. And that's when I was missing his games. But you get to a certain age where it really start to count, where it really matters to you. Whereas when they are young, it really don't matter as much to them. They like, oh, I like it, but it's okay, dad, if you can't make it, like, it's cool. But when you get older, it's like, dad, you gonna be at the game? Like, oh man, you ain't gonna be able to make it? Okay, no, I get it. Yeah, you know they mouth saying they okay, but their heart is hurting. Cause you wanna perform for the ones you love. You don't care nothing about your teammates and their parents. You wanna perform for the ones you love. And it comes to a time to where, as a man, you gotta think about that and you gotta say, you know what? I gotta beat up for my children, like bump all this money because I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of men, a lot of men, you using that, I gotta work as an excuse because work is fun work is fun like right now i'm headed out of town right now i'm not missing a game today no practice today the coach threw on my younger son a little extra practice but that ain't nothing you know my wife and her mom they're gonna be able to handle that but i'm headed out of town for a meeting and then coming right back in same day i could have went out last night and miss practice and went down last night or I could stay extra today. But I'm like, no, I'm finna be here. In and out because guess what? Games is tomorrow. And I'm gonna miss my youngest son games on Saturday, but he got games on Sunday that I'm gonna be able to make because our oldest son don't play on Sunday. So, a lot of men go to talk about, oh, I gotta work, I gotta work, but Work is fun because when you're at work, you with the boys and you talking about all kind of stuff. You talking about you talking about women, you talking about sports, you talking about Donald Trump and Joe Biden, politics, you laughing, key keying, drinking your beer. Or some, or some liquor on lunch break, margaritas. If you in the, you know, that business side of things, you having you some, some Jack Daniels or some margarita. If you working out somewhere else, you have you slipping you in a little hard lemonade and you kick in and then ho hollering about you got to work. No, I'm gonna tell you something. <clears throat> when I was working a regular job, 40 hours a week working for somebody else, I had a cap on me, 20K to 60, maybe 20K to 60K a year is what I could make on that job. I could have put myself in danger and went to be a police and made, or a detention deputy. I could have made 44,000 as a detention deputy. Could have made about 40 to 70 or 80 as a police, you know, but of course that's what you gotta put in time. The 
get that pay to go up and up and up. So I said, no, I ain't finna do that. And I, I, got, I ain't got a record as an adult, but I got stuff in my past that I can't pass that lot of tether tests and I don't wanna be getting up, keep lying to these people. And so here I am as a grown man, husband and a father getting a W-2 for $20,000. I'm like, man, what the world? This ain't gonna cut it, but I wanted to make six figures in my life. And, and guess what? When I force myself to think outside the box, when I force myself to say, okay, Tony, use your mind. How can you make more money? How can you use your natural gifts? And that's the one thing that a lot of men don't understand. It's like, you going to work and you working for these people, but then you going home and you building, you building a whole house. You 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 a handyman. You you fixing ACs. You fixing refrigerators. You hanging up TVs on the wall. You you putting down tile. You painting. You drawing. You singing. You dancing. You playing the drums. You doing all this right here, but you working for these people. So it's like, why is you working for these people when you got all these gifts in your hand? <coughs> you got all these gifts in your hand. What you working for somebody for? So I'm gonna tell you what you need to do. I started to push myself like that. I'm like, man, I got to use my gifts. I got to use my gifts. And you know what my gifts did? I'm working for these people. And these people take and pay me twenty thousand dollars of work 40 hours a week i started using my gifts on the side and i remember one year before i left my job my gifts made thirty six thousand. i'm like what in the world but i couldn't i couldn't believe it still when i actually doubled down on my gifts that first year full time on my gifts i made one hundred and forty seven thousand dollars the next year, I think I probably made $250,000. I went from literally $20,000 a year on somebody else's job, on somebody else's schedule to making six figures and making my own schedule. And I'm gonna tell you, the stuff I did that took me away from my son, from missing his games or what have you, and not being home all the time, I actually didn't have to do those things. A lot of those gigs and stuff I took, that was just for the experience, just for the fun. When I was missing a lot of time, it was for one basketball season, I was working in the NBA. I worked in the NBA with a team as a team life coach and the team was in Texas. And I live in Florida. So every week they flew me from Florida to Texas. And I would spend two to five days with them. And then in addition to that, I would tour because I was, you know, viral online at the time. So I would tour and I would go to Atlanta, I'd go to DC, I'd go to Dallas, I'd go to Houston, I'd go to New York, LA, Boston, Miami, Charlotte. I'm hitting all these cities. Every city I go, I'm selling, you know, 200 to 700 tickets, Chicago, so every city you know i'm making every city i'm making three grand to 25 grand i think that year i probably did the year i remember that i looked at i did three hundred and thirty thousand dollars in ticket sales of course you got the venue you got the flight or the or the travel hotel so, you know, you probably, I probably made out 200 to 250 grand. And probably that year was probably one of my, my, my half a million dollar years. But what I'm saying is I did that with no mentor, with no publicist with no assistant, with no road manager. I booked the hotels myself on Google. Googling event space in Chicago, 
clicking images, looking what's out there. Like I learned everything I need to learn from Google. Google was my consultant. I don't have a college degree. My mom and daddy are not entrepreneurs. I have no outlier links, no outlier abilities in the areas that I worked in. I just forced myself to learn it. I made myself learn it. And I did it by trial and error. And I did it my way. And I did it how I could do it. So I literally had a, a auditorium, a ballroom with 700 people with no decorations. No decorations. You see how these women conferences be? They got a stage. They got a leather couch. They got a they got a coffee table. They got LED screen behind them. They spending a hundred thousand dollars to produce the event. They have the same amount of people or less than what I had in my event. I had the stage that come with the room and a wireless microphone. That's it. The most I have is two banners, the little retractable banners that stand up, them, them little rectangle banners that you just pull out the thing and it stand up. I have two of them outside. And then when the event start, I get them two things and I bring them and sit one on each end of the stage. That's it. That's it. Did it my way. What makes sense? But guess what? I was able to create a way to where I could take my son to practice every day, take my son to school every day. And then I had to miss some games. I had to miss some games, but I was able to make a lot of games. And now I don't miss any games. Now I don't miss any game because I, I continue to create. I continue to create a system, continue to do something different. So guess what I then learned? I, I then learned, you know what? I don't have to fly to New York City to do a seminar. I could do the same seminar on Zoom. I could do the seminar on Zoom. What am I doing? Zoom cost me for 500 people. It cost me $50 a month. It's like I could go to your city and I could do an event but it's going to cost me $500 to $1,200 for a flight. Bro, what are you doing? What is this person doing? This person trying to get in the wreck. I don't know what they're doing. They're going so slow in the middle of the road. It's almost like they're trying to get me to hit them in the back. Is they falling asleep? You gotta realize for me to do these videos and talk to you and actually be coherent and make sense and watch the road, that's the anointing. I want you to realize that. So here I am. Man, I got to get around this man here. I, it hit me, I started to realize like, you know what? I could go on Zoom. What they had? I could go on Zoom and talk to the same people. If New York wanna come out, Atlanta could come out, Dallas could come out, Chicago could come out, all on one call. All on one call. <clears throat> and I could charge $25 and I could be at home do the Zoom and then go right back to my family. And the same message was delivered. The same purpose was served. So what am I doing? Why am I going all here and there, spending thousands of dollars 
just to be around people in person. Got to meet all them spirits. Got to hug all these people. Shake all these hands. You don't know what spirits getting on you. What germs, you know, people sick, don't want to tell you because they want to meet you. Now you're taking back a cold, taking back a virus to the house. Lord showed me another way and said, hey, if somebody really want the message, they're going to get on Zoom and that's who you want. That's the type of people you want to be working with. If somebody's so stuck on meeting you, that's idolatry. That's idolatry and that ain't what you're trying to entertain. That's a Jezebel spirit and that ain't what you're trying to entertain. You're trying to do the work. You're trying to help people and you want to help people who want to be helped. Not people who want to worship you or idolize you or some of that nature. So the Lord started to show me this. Then he started to show me, listen, you you only teaching, you only teaching live. You going and you teaching live, but you could put this stuff on a video. You could record this stuff and you could put it into a course and people could take it at their own time because yeah, you could teach at home on Zoom, but everybody ain't gonna be able to make it. And then part of the reason why they paying for it is because it's live and you talking to them live and they could answer, they could ask questions. But you could create another version of this and talk to people through video. Talk to people through video that's recorded that they could take on their own time. And the Lord showed me like, guess what? When it's midnight your time, it's 6 a.m. somewhere else. It's 9 p.m. somewhere else. It's 5 a.m. somewhere else. It's 5 p.m. somewhere else. So, while you sleeping, you could be earning. And now, your earning don't just have to be just when you standing in front of somebody or sitting in front of somebody talking. Now your earning could be, did I turn down the right road? Cause, well, they just not building the apartment. Yeah, I turned down the right road. Wow, they done brought them apartments up. My goodness, somebody finna make some money. So just like that, Lord showed me that. So now it's like, okay, Lord, got the courses online that people could buy anytime. Got the live Zoom classes. Then I got the one-on-one -on -one coaching session, but I'm still at home. That's three different ways right there. Then I got the books. Then I got the YouTube videos. Now we had five different ways. Then I got the t-shirts I could sell. Now we have six different ways. Got the products I could sell. The little card game. Now we have seven different ways. But then with the books, got 20 books. So now we at 26 ways. With the courses, got 70 courses. So now we at 96 ways. You see what I'm saying? So Lord started to show me like, listen, it's a lot of ways to get it. And you still could be a man of your home. You still could be home to where the devil ain't got no room to play. Like you home every day. So, so, the, so your wife ain't got no time to go out, be out all the time at the mall meeting men and men shooting they shot and she feeling lonely, she feeling hurt, she feeling abandoned and she give a man her number or she bumping into her ex-boyfriend or somebody of the sort. And then the next thing you know, they in an affair. Your kids, you never home, so mama tired and so they, they getting a sneak on their phone and they doing this. Next thing you know, they into pornography. They into this and that. And right there up under your nose. But no, you home now. You home. You get to watch over. You get to be, 
use your wisdom, your discernment. You get to be there. Now there ain't no stuff, ain't nothing getting over. Ain't nothing, the devil can't slip in and try to play on people because the guardian is there, you there. You the head of the household, you tapped in, you locked in. You ain't got to be drunk, you ain't got to be high. You got a natural high because of the grind that you own. The creativity that you drumming up. That's your high. See, that's what the Lord showed me. Starting to realize. Wow. Okay, Lord. Appreciate you. So listen. I'm over here picking up my dad. He going to my meeting with me. We headed out of town. Another city, same state few hours apart though but hey god bless you listen to me think on this thing you know if if you a woman watching this send this to your brother if he got kids send this to you you know your husband your your uncle your cousin and if y'all fellas you need help building business get 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 with me i do one-on-one -on -one sessions i give you a whole blueprint if your mind don't work like that, you stuck on it, you don't know what to do, i give you a whole blueprint. That's how my mind works. So maybe that might be my outlier ability. And that, if that's my outlier ability, okay, then praise the Lord. i give you a whole, into all my intellectual property, i give it to you so you can earn from it. If that's going to have you home, if that's going to help you get off that job over the next couple of years, while you building that on the side, then... That's what I want to do. God bless you. We'll talk soon.